The first step is to measure and cut the molding for your frame. For this, you'll need Logan's Pro Saw. Let's take a look at how easy it is to use. The Pro Saw model F100-2 has been specifically designed for cutting picture frame molding. It features a 36-inch left-hand fence with an 18-inch right-hand fence to support moldings while providing an easy-to-use miter measuring scale. An adjustable locking stop provides for the quick and accurate cutting of additional pieces of molding that are to be the same length. First, let's get familiar with the pieces that you'll find when you open the Pro Saw box. The parts include the baseboard and saw base with angle pivot, a right-hand fence, a left-hand fence with extension, two clamps with rods, the saw itself with handle to be attached, a fence stop, and various hardware including two wrenches to help with assembly and a support leg for the fence extension. Begin the short assembly process by first adjusting the tension on the rotating pivot handle. To do this, lift up on the pivot handle and rotate the angle pivot. There should be some drag on the angle pivot when rotating. Adjust the pivot screws as needed. It is important to note that the amount of drag on the angle pivot increases the amount of accuracy of the cut. Once adjusted, it's time to install the clamp rods. Insert the flat end of the first clamp rod into the hole in the baseboard. Align the hole in the clamp rod with the hole in the back of the saw base. Secure the clamp rod to the base by inserting a rod screw through the base and into the rod through a rod spacer. Tighten the rod screw by using the wrench provided while holding the nut in place. Repeat the procedure for the second clamp rod. Next, Set the right side fence onto the saw base and attach by screwing in the two thumb screws into the fence. Next, tighten the thumb screw on the front side of the base into the indentation in the edge of the fence. Now, repeat the steps for attaching the left fence to the base. To attach the extension fence, Slide the connectors that extend from both the extension and the left fence into each other's receiver. Tighten the thumb screw on the back of the fence, then turn the pro saw onto its side to tighten the bottom thumb screw. Next, attach the support leg to the fence by sliding it down the channel on the bottom of the fence and tighten it by rotating it clockwise. Tilt the pro saw back up into its upright position and slide the molding stop onto the left fence and tighten the screw to lock it in place for later use. Using the bolts provided in the handle, attach the handle to the saw. Be careful not to lose the two nuts, which fit inside the hexagonal recesses of the handle. Next, remove the plastic spacer from the alignment rods and slide the saw onto the rods with the saw handle on the same side as the pivot handle. The remaining holes in the baseboard are for those wanting to mount their pro saw to a work table. Mounting screws are provided. Drill one quarter inch pilot holes into the table for the bolts. When it's time to replace the blade in your saw, it's easy. Simply loosen the blade tension knob and unscrew the thumb knob and mounting plate from each end of the saw. The blade can now be removed from the saw. Finally, reassemble with a new blade, making sure that the blade's teeth are facing away from the handle. The Pro Saw is now ready to use, but before we do any cutting, let's take a look at how you measure the length of framing pieces to cut. Just remember to keep one thing in mind. 
the outside length of a miter cut piece of molding is longer than the inside length. It is the inside length which is the side that fits along the item you are framing. So measurements must be made on this inside length. So for example, let's say you have an 11 by 14 inch photograph to frame. If you were to cut 11 inch and 14 inch framing pieces, your assembled frame would be much too small for your photograph. The outside dimensions of the frame would be 11 by 14, but the inside dimensions would be much too small for the artwork. So again, when you measure, always measure the inside of the molding for making your cuts. By the way, the inside of the molding is called the rabbit of the molding. It's the part of the molding that has the groove in it which holds the artwork being framed. Okay, it's time to cut the molding. Begin by placing the outside of your piece of molding against the fence, finished side up, so that the rabbit is facing front. Slide the molding under the saw blade far enough so that a full 45 degree cut can be made. You don't have to worry about taking any measurements at this time. Slide down the clamp to hold the molding firmly in place. To do so, first adjust the block height then, screw down the foot onto the molding. For the best cut, be sure to set the foot as close to the saw blade as possible. For miter cuts, set the angle pivot to 45 degrees on the right side. Do this by lifting the pivot handle up and rotating the angle pivot until the angle block arrow lines up with the 45 degree mark. Make sure that the angle pivot locks into place. Finally, Slide the saw down and cut the molding. Accuracy will be improved and cutting will be easier if you use long, full strokes and a seesaw cutting motion. This also helps to clear chips from the teeth of the saw blade. To make your second cut, which will also cut your piece to length, begin by releasing the clamp. Then, slide the cut edge of the molding over to the desired dimension. Remember to take your measurement from the rabbit edge of the molding. Align the rabbit corner on the scale dimension. Be sure to add one eighth of an inch for clearance. In this example, we are cutting a frame for an 11 by 14 inch frame. So the measurement for our first piece of molding is 14 and an eighth inches. It's important to always add an eighth of an inch extra to every molding cut you make. This extra eighth inch creates an extra one quarter inch of space inside the back of the frame to allow the glass, matted artwork, and backing material to fit properly into the back of the frame when finishing. In other words, an 11 by 14 inch piece of glass will not fit into an exact 11 by 14 inch frame. Extra space is needed, and the extra eighth inch added to your cuts provides this. Now, slide the stop against the molding and tighten. This stop assures consistent results when you cut your second 14th and an 8th inch piece of molding. Next, secure the molding in place by clamping down the molding on both sides if possible. Rotate the angle pivot to 45 degrees on the left side and you're ready to cut. Once again, make sure you cut using a rocking seesaw-like motion. Remove the molding by simply loosening the left clamp. Cutting your second piece of molding of the same length is even easier than the first because the stop is already in place, assuring that the lengths will match. And that's all there is to using the picture framing pro saw.